Alrighty, we're back at it. Uh, this is another day. It's actually been a couple days since the video series has started and the first episode was a combination of days, but whatever, that doesn't make a difference. So, a couple updates. Uh, my press here has just been supercharged. I bought a brand new Baldor 5 horsepower 3600 RPM motor and that's running the pump and it makes it go super fast, which is awesome for punching. I just punched a hole in this three and a half pound billet. I have two more heating up in the fire and, uh, and then a whole bunch more in that pail right there. Look at that, lots of three and a half pound billets. So right now, my heat is going to be heating up, uh, uh, punching, the holes and then going to the power hammer and I'm going to start with trying to spread the cheeks a little bit and forge the round face of the hammer with the cupping tool. I, I think that's what I'm going to try and do, see if that heat works out. Uh, if not, I'm going to see if I can forge the troughs in the same heat that I punch. So that's going to mean that the, all the heat that's left over from the punching will be utilized and then it'll save me on another heat. That's the hope anyway. Okay. So we had a, a little bit of change of, of plans there. I just went through and forged a few hammers and uh, the whole punching the hole and then drawing the cheeks out a bit was not gonna work very well. So instead what I'm doing is punching the hole and forging the troughs in and that is working very good. I'm using a spring fuller under the power hammer. Um, there's a few of the hammers right there that I have gotten done or that heat has been gotten done, which is the first heat after forging the billet. So I'm going to go in and have something to eat. Then I'm gonna mark out a few more billets and we're gonna do this process on a few more hammers. And uh, then we're gonna take a few of them and, and finish them, do the whole process on them, and make sure everything is good and that I don't have to do uh, any more experimenting because that takes time and then the hammers end up slightly different. Um, so that's the plan and that's what's happening.
I'm tired. I just got done a whole whack load of billets. <clears throat> the second heat. So first was the heat forged in the billet, and next is punching and forging the troughs. I have wrecked my power hammer spring fullers. They're completely wrecked, and in fact so bad that on the last hammer it just uh, the lines were just not fixable. So the trough lines. So I had to throw it away. So I had two mess ups. One in one that was punched too far off, and. Uh, the, the one that had the bad troughs. And there might be a few in there that won't pass, but hopefully I can either try and fix them or I have to squish them, throw them away. So there's the pile right there. You can see there's a whole whack load of them. So that is all three and a half pounders. There is more three and a half pounders still. Alrighty everyone, it's been a long time since we've last talked. Maybe not in YouTube land, but anyways. So I have been having a ton of troubles, basically Murphy's Law type troubles throughout this whole process. And most of it has to do with my press breaking. Um, I broke the clevis, the thing that screws onto the ram that attaches it to the bottom die uh, slide. Um, I have broken uh, the thing that holds the top die in place because of pulling it out with the punch stripper. Uh, I have broken the punch off of my punch plate and a number of other things. I've broke some fullers. I have been really hard on some tooling and uh, I'm of course, you know, trying to maximize my heats so that there is less of them to do but also try and do it in a way that's very clean and therefore there's a lot of warm forging involved um, to kind of for cleaning things up and like you know reopening the, the eyes up and, and such and it is wreaking havoc on my tools. Um, there's a few four and a half pound billets forged, some two and a half pound billets forged. I have about 40 of the hammers ready for stamping. So they're, they're finished and ready for stamping. Here are some of the things that I have done today. Some of them were already here, but you can see that on this heat, I have drifted the hammers and then spread the cheeks. And you can see that the cheeks have become level with the troughs. You can see it really well on this one right there. You can see it really well on all of them, I guess. Whoop, there we go. So then I have to go ahead and clean up the troughs. Even though that the edge where the cheeks meet the troughs is pretty rough, that doesn't matter because that gets shined up by the, like that doesn't even become cheeks. You can see how some of it, how some of them are a little rough um, on the very edge of the cheeks when it goes into the trough. But you can see over here that once you get those troughs forged, you know, it just, it, uh, it, you know, it cuts off basically all that bad stuff and they are looking clean and nice and I'm happy with them. There is the old clevis. You can see it, it was broken in half. And it's held together right now by the set screw. And this is the new one. Look how beefy that is. It's a beefy, beefy piece. Here is the bottom die stripper plate with a stuck hammer in it and the punch that broke off. Also, as I forgot to show, I guess over here, see that little bar hanging down? That thing is supposed to look like that and the die plate slides in that slot. You can see what happened is when the press was pulling the hammer off in that plate that you just saw, it had so much pressure that it broke that right off. You can see if there was a plate in there and it came down really hard, it would break that off. I need to obviously get the tooling sorted and everything where it should be. You can see I have a whole bunch of wood here. I have started cutting the handles. So that's some more boards that need to be ripped. Here is some long planks, maybe you would call them. Um, and then they all need to be sawed into lengths with the miter saw or the chop saw. And here is some of the billets. Obviously I pick through these and choose the best ones that I have. So you can, I, you know, probably a third of these will not be up to snuff for handles. This one's a pretty nice piece. Um, so that's some of the things I need to do. 
just other tooling things. Obviously, all of these hand, like, I'm not even close to being done half the work on these things because of course forging is only it's half the work the rest of it of course is grinding uh, i've ordered a whole whack load of grinding belts and of course the handling and the heat treating is going to be a big job and the polishing just repetitive stuff and wire brushing the scale off and so it's a, it's a this is a big job